So today's case is a little hard for me to discuss. And you'll understand why as we go through the video. But today, we're gonna to talk about two killers, a husband and wife team, who on June 8th of 2014, began a rampage of terror that would start at a pizzeria and end at a Walmart, leaving five people dead. We're gonna discuss what's become known as the Las Vegas ambush and the two killers, Jared and Amanda Miller. Come join me. So Jared Miller and Amanda Woodruff met in 2011. Amanda was described by friends and family as a caring, loving young lady who cared deeply about animals, even volunteered at a uh, several animal shelters. Jared had relocated from Kennewick, Washington to Lafayette, Indiana, and was a crazed, drug addicted, conspiracy theorist who believed multiple conspiracy theories and harbored very strong anti-government, anti-police views. They got together in 2011 and would marry in September of 2013 against Amanda's parents' wishes. They knew how dangerous he was. Even his own family knew how dangerous he was. And after a stint in jail, Jared and Amanda decided they were gonna relocate to somewhere where they could be part of something. And that was here in Las Vegas. Now during the time they were dating all the way up through their marriage, Amanda's personality had completely changed. She began seeing the world the same way Jared did. Her family says that this was probably due to the fact that she was so infatuated with Jared. And he had so much control over her that she bought into it. And she began making regular posts on Facebook that were rather quite scaring. And when they decided to, to relocate here to Las Vegas because they had burned all their bridges with his family, her family, all their friends in Lafayette, they came out here and they set themselves up at the Oak Tree Apartments located at 110 North Bruce Street. Their apartment number was 154. Now we're on our way now to go and see that apartment. That's it, that's where they were at. It's under heavy lock and key because of what happened. But that's where they stayed, just inside and to the left. But that's where they set up. And it was while they were in that apartment that Jared shot the famous Joker video. My fellow Americans, I'm the Joker and I'm running for president because year after year I've watched you Americans my fellow citizens vote for tyranny. And it's always the lesser of the two evils. You don't want too much tyranny too fast. You just, the lesser of two evils every year. But we have a chance to make history, ladies and gentlemen. You can vote for the more evil. And I'll tell you what, I give you my word on this. And I'm a man of my word, as you know. <laughs> and uh, I give you my word, utter transparency. When you vote for the Joker, you will know. You will know exactly what you get. Total and utter tyranny. On a map. And they became 
completely infatuated with the DC supervillains, Harley Quinn and the Joker. Even to the point where Amanda got a heart-shaped tattoo, which was a picture of the Joker and Harley Quinn kissing. And those were the personas that they worked off of. Now they did get involved in the Clive and Bundy BLM fiasco. And they did show up out there, which caused Amanda to lose her job at the Hobby Lobby here in Las Vegas due to no call, no shows. They were asked to leave that ranch a few days after arriving because of their extreme viewpoints and because Jared was in possession of a firearm and he was a known felon. So after he left and they got back, sometime in the middle of May, the standoff ended in a stalemate with small victories to both the federal government, BLM, and uh, Bundy. However, Jared and Amanda saw it as a complete victory for Bundy. And they decided they were going to hatch themselves a plan to further that cause. Really sick and tired of all these laws and regulations is absolutely insane. As a person of the DMV, can you tell me how many laws are on the books concerning drivers? Deanna's the whole court system is messed up. It's not my fault. And that he needs to drop the case. And if he doesn't, I'm going to be forwarding this bill to you guys. And if they come to arrest me for noncompliance or whatever, I'm just going to start shooting people. On June 7th of 2014, Jared posted a cryptic message to his Facebook account, and it was the last post he would ever make. And it simply read, the dawn of a new day, may all our coming sacrifices be worth it. And at the time, nobody knew what that meant. But the next morning, June 8th, he would make that very clear. Receiving a 415A at Nellison's store at CC's property. All we have at this time is there's two victims inside the business. 444, 444, officers down, officers down. On June 8th, 2014, at approximately 11, 10 a.m., Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Officers Igor Saldo and Alan Beck arrived at this CC's Pizza located at 120 Nellis Boulevard. Approximately 10 minutes later, Jared and Amanda Miller arrived at this same CC's Pizza. Jared and Amanda entered through the front door and asked if they could use the restroom. After being granted permission, they walked towards the two officers who were enjoying their lunch. As they approached, Jared withdrew a 38 caliber revolver, placed it to the head of Officer Saldo, who was a husband and father, pulled the trigger, killing him instantly. Officer Alan Beck, realizing a threat, reached for his service pistol. Beck was able to fire one round, but unfortunately was overcome by fire from Jared and now from Amanda who had produced a 9mm Smith & Wesson pistol and engaged as well. Beck, who was a husband and father as well, was immediately killed and placed on the ground next to his fallen compatriot, Igor Saldo. They secured Alan Beck and Igor Saldo's firearms and extra magazines containing ammo. After ensuring both officers are dead, Jared and Amanda drape a Gadsden don't tread on me flag over the body of Alan Beck, then pinned a note to police officers reading, the revolution has begun. They then placed a swastika on top of Ego Saldo's body and yelled to the frightened and shocked onlookers that the revolution had began and to tell the police they could find him at Walmart. They then exited out the side door and walked across Stewart Avenue, heading southbound towards the Walmart. 
So what you see in front of you is the CC's Pizza that we just left. Now those doors that you see right there, just beyond that tree, those are the doors that Jared and Amanda exited out of after screaming that the revolution had begun, draping the Gadsden flag and the note on top of Beck's body and then putting a swastika symbol on top of Officer Saldo's body. They walked out and just to the right, they had stashed their duffel bag with the shotgun and the ammo. They collected that and ran directly across the street from where we're at. They crossed what you see in front of you is Stewart. And they crossed about where we're at. And as they crossed the street, they made a right or a left on your screen right now it's right they turned following this exact route that I'm going to follow right now <clears throat> they came down this way They cut across. And they took this little alleyway right here. As you can see, this is like a homeless hangout for homeless people here. But they came across with their firearms still in hand. They made their left. and then made the right following this wall that you see right here down. So this is the infamous walkway that Jared and Amanda came down that you see on that surveillance footage. her carrying the duffel bag and him, both of them having their firearms in hand. Turned the corner here and went into the store, right here. Jared Jelling caught the attention of 31-year-old Joseph Wilcox, who was standing in line at the customer service center, awaiting to turn a computer modem. Jared fired one time into the ceiling, causing Joseph Wilcox to draw his concealed Glock 9mm pistol and pursue Jared. Preparing to engage Jared, Joseph passed Amanda, not realizing that they were together. Only inches away from Joseph Wilcox, Amanda raised her 9mm Smith & Wesson pistol that she had just used to kill the officers at CeCe's Pizza and fired one time at Joseph Wilcox, striking him in the ribs, incapacitating and killing him almost immediately. Jared and Amanda continued through the store, yelling, telling everyone to get out as they made their way to the sporting goods department. At about this time, the first officers were arriving on scene at CeCe's Pizza to discover their fallen comrades laying dead on the floor. First on scene at CeCe's is Officer Brosnahan, who meets with stunned onlookers who told them that Jared and Amanda had run across to Walmart. Brosnahan ran across Stewart Avenue following the same path Jared and Amanda Miller had taken just moments earlier. As Brosnahan is surrounded by fleeing customers, he meets with a Walmart associate who tells him that Jared and Amanda are inside and lets Brosnahan in through the back door. 
At this time, radio calls of an active shooter at the Walmart have reached LVMPD emergency services. We have an active shooter inside the business, 201 North Nellis. Jared and Amanda reach the sporting goods department, where Jared secures a baseball bat from a display and uses it to break into the ammo case in the sporting goods department and begins to raid the area of all useful ammo. As Officer Brosnahan exits the back stock room and onto the floor, he engages in a firefight with both Jared and Amanda and is successful in striking Amanda in the upper right shoulder. Knowing he doesn't stand much of a chance in a firefight with two individuals, Brosnahan then disengages and exits back out of the back of the store. As more Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department units arrive on scene, they meet with Officer Brosnahan. Sergeant McKenzie, along with other LVMPD officers, make entry to the front of the Walmart store. While three officers continue into Walmart to engage the Millers to break off and kick in the door to the asset protection surveillance room to see if they can monitor the situation. Being unable to successfully work the camera system, Metro calls for an asset protection associate to assist with running the camera system. A young man by the name of Roderick is led in under heavy Metro Guard and led to the surveillance room to assist. At around this time, another officer with an AR-15 loaded with 556 ammo enters in the back door where Officer Brosnahan had exited only moments earlier. Over the course of the next few minutes, the Millers and Las Vegas Metropolitan Police would engage in several firefights. At this time, Jared and Amanda have barricaded themselves in the back northwest corner of the store. It is here where they've decided they will make their last stand. At one point, Jared stands up and walks to the back northwest corner, moving a shopping cart, and begins to reach for a plastic vehicle tire ramps. As Jared reaches for the ramps, the officer with the AR-15 leans out the door, places his optic sight squarely on Jared's chest, and squeezes one round, striking Jared in the chest. As Jared is hit in the chest, he falls to the ground and low crawls back towards Amanda, Amanda, who's been stationary in the middle of the aisle, turns and begins to point her firearm directly at Jared. It appears that Amanda is attempting to fire upon Jared, but after failing to do so, Amanda turns, places the gun to the right side of her temple, and pulls the trigger. Simultaneously, Jared's body goes limp as he succumbs to his injury. They're looking at each other. It looks like they're shooting at each other. Looks like she just shot him, and she's about to four or five. The female suspect did just shoot the male. He's not down. The female just shot herself in the head. As SWAT closes in, they find Jared deceased on the ground where he lay. Amanda, however, is still breathing. She's rushed to University Medical Center, where she succumbs to her injuries an hour later. After 35 minutes, 23 of which were inside of Walmart, the nightmare finally comes to an end. So at the beginning of this video, I told you that it was hard for me to talk about and that you would find out why. Well, now's that time. 
2014, I worked for Walmart in the asset protection department. Six months after that incident, I trained at that store to become a manager. Several friends and colleagues, including Roderick, the APA associate who filmed the footage for Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, would tell me the story of what really occurred. And their stories are nothing less than bone chilling. I want to thank you for joining me today on this journey. And I hope to see you next time. But until then, deuces.